fam. Today we have a product from T-Bone Racing that is designed to protect or for many of us cover up some of the scrapes and dents we've put into our Super Rock Rays. The T-Bone Racing skid plate is offered to provide you with yet another level of protection to extend the life or the look of your Super Rock Ray and today I'm going to show you how to install it. So as always, let's cue up that intro footage. For the returning Sinister Supreme Team fam, I thank you for coming back. And for those that are new, thank you for giving Jay Sinister Productions a go. I am Jay of Jay Sinister Productions and we provide yet another vector on topics such as RC, casual cycling, everyday carrying, product reviews, unboxings, and tech related items. I hope you stick around to the end. I hope you like, I hope you share, and I also really hope you subscribe to this channel. Remember, I always have a few projects in the works, so seriously, seriously consider subscribing to this channel to keep up with all of my latest video releases. All right, fam, what we have today is the T-Bone Racing TBR Chassis Skid Losi Super Rock Ray model number 37219. As you can see, this is a five piece kit and it also comes with all the necessary hardware that you'll need to complete this installation. These skid plates are made from 0.93 Delrin plastic. And you may ask, I've heard of Delrin plastic, but what is it? Delrin, or here's the scientific name, bear with me, Delrin acetal, homopolymer, polyoxymethylene palm is, according to DuPont, the ideal material in parts that are designed to replace metal. In this case, we'll be covering up metal, so this fits right in. Delrin combines low friction and high wear resistance with high strength and stiffness. This is exactly what you want when it comes to the RC hobby and for bashing and rock crawling in particular. This provides a further strength to the T-Bone Racing slogan of more bashing, less breaking. Here's a look at what's included and this is what you've already seen. We have five Delrin armor plates which are all pre-drilled with countersunk holes which correspond to the holes on the Super Rock Raid chassis. There are also 19 fasteners of varying dimensions. We have three M3 by 10 fasteners, two M3 by 12 fasteners. We have four M3 by 16 fasteners, two M4 by 12 fasteners, two M4 by 14 fasteners, one M4 by 16 fastener, and five M4 by 20 fasteners with three washers with an outside, inside diameter and width of 5 15th on the outside, 1 31st on the inside, and 0 0.032 for the width. If you want to complete this installation, I suggest you have the following tools. All you need is a 2.5 millimeter hex, you've seen this one before, a 564th hex, you've also seen this before, and the driver of your choice, which in my case, I always use my handy dandy Makita. But again, you can use any driver of your choice. You can hand crank if you want to, or you can use something that's electric. The installation is simple, folks. It's easy. Anyone can do this. We'll do one of the pieces together, then we'll move on to a sped up version of the remaining pieces. During the install, once I move to another piece, I will flash up or overlay a schematic of the particular part, which will also show you 
the actual fastener, the number of fasteners, and where they go. So with that said, we're going to reset up, bring in the star of the show, and we're going to get wrenching. Stay tuned. All right, fam, let's go ahead and get started on one piece together. What we're going to do now, we're going to install the left side skid, which is this piece right here. And as you can see by the piece, it fits on the left side around the battery tray compartment. And it will fit right here. So all you have is one, two, three, four fasteners to remove and four fasteners to replace. And what we'll need is two M3 by 16s, one M4 by 12, and one M4 by 20. So let's go ahead and start removing some of these fasteners and you can use the actual part as your template so you know which fasteners to remove through so removing this one, this one, this one, and lastly, put this here so I'm 100% sure, this one. So I'll start from the bottom and move my way up top in the removal. All right, so I'm gonna get out to start my 2.5 millimeter and I'm gonna double check my holes again. Make sure you have this the right side out. It does not fit over here. Make sure your countersunk holes are facing outwards. All right, and we'll start removing. So here's one. And also to note, you can see that I have the Super Rock Race standing up on its back with the uh, fifth wheel as support to keep it in a vertical position so it makes the installation and removal of parts that much easier. So we have one removed. I'm going to swap out real quick from the 2.5 to the 5 64th. I'm going to move, remove the second. And my hand is in the way, I apologize. Sorry about that. So we now we've moved this one. So we've moved one, two fasteners. And we're gonna move on to the next. My hand's gonna be in the way again. I'll go ahead and go upside down with my drill. Remove this one. That's three. So we, we've, we have removed one, two, three, and finally will be this fastener right next to it, which we'll have to swap out our hex back to the 564th and remove the last fastener, which is in there very tight. That's fine. Just change our torque. And remove, oh, it's in there real tight. Must be a lot of Loctite on that to keep that in place. No problem, we'll get it out. And there we go. Oh yeah, a lot of the good stuff in there, you can tell, a lot of it. So replace that there. Now we have four of our Original stock fasteners removed, and our plate skid plate is going to go here to cover up that piece of the bottom chassis. So we'll start with first the M4 by 12. We'll need one of those, and we're going to place that right back into the first hole that we actually the last fastener we took out. Not going to fasten it all the way. M4 by 12 is in, so we have one in, and now we have, excuse me, we have one in. Now we have one, two, three more to go. Now we need a M3 by 16. And that's going to go here. M3 by 16 here, so we have the M4 by 12 here. Moving on, we have the 
M3 by 16 here. Then moving down, we have another M3 by 16. So we'll grab that now. Get that started. And last but not least is one M4 by 20 at the bottom. We'll do the M4 by 20 now since I have the correct hex already selected. And that is the 2.5 millimeter. Change my torque down so I don't over tighten the bolt and possibly strip it. Swap out to the 564 hex. And here we go. There's one. Two, swap back to the 2.5 millimeter hex and finish up. Tighten up and we have one skid plate on. Finish. So you can see how thick this is, or you may not be able to see how thick it is, but the difference between the factory chassis skid plate and now we have the T-Bone Racing Delrin skid plate installed gives it a little bit more protection. Now we'll move on we'll do one more piece together and then I'll go ahead and speed it up finish the rest and then we'll see the finished product. Alright moving right along we're going to move on to the battery cover skid plate and that fits over the battery cover like so, right in like a puzzle piece, seamless, and we only have one, two, three, four, five, and that corresponds to one, two, three, four, five fasteners to remove. And for this, we're going to actually use two of the washers, and actually three of the washers, let me rephrase that, for these three fasteners here, which are the bottom three fasteners there. So we get a good secure fit. What we'll need for this portion, once we remove these five fasteners, we'll need two of the M3 by 10s and three of the M3 by 12s plus five of the washers. So let's go ahead and swap out our hex. If you didn't already do so, remove the 2.5. And we'll insert the 564th and we'll remove the fasteners from the battery cover. There's one. Two. Three. Four. And finally, the fifth and last one for the battery cover. And five. So we now have all five fasteners removed. Put those to the side. Again, we'll double check to make sure everything will fit. And it will. All right, now, after reviewing the schematics, I felt it would be easier and simpler, especially for the part of installing the washers if we remove the battery cover plate. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so I'm back. What I had to do was do this off camera, uh, set the washers on top of or in between the Delrin, excuse me, the Delrin skid plate and the battery uh, lid. Sandwich those in between run my screws through these three holes, flip it over, hold it upside down, take this piece here, get it into place, sandwich everything together, and then take my driver, start the screws one at a time. And once you do that, you have one portion of the skid plate installed 
and ready to go. And you just redo the same thing for the back piece, which I'll do together with you. All you need are two of the M3 by 10 screws. We'll place those in off camera. Take the driver. Start one and start the other. And that is it. Now you have your battery door, skid plate installed, five screws, three washers. You can replace it and everything should line up. Perfectly. So to give it a little, little push there. Let me back off so you can see that. And there it is. Again, you still have access to the pull tab at the bottom to remove your battery door. It comes right off. And you can slide it back in, push, clicks in place, seamless. Everything goes together perfectly. Now we have protection on the left side of the Super Rock Ray bottom. Nice and protected, good to go. Now we'll move on and finish up the rest. We'll speed it up, add some music, and then come to the conclusion. Let's get on it. Fam, we are finished. The install is complete. Very simple to do. If you do it step by step, piece by piece, and fastener by fastener, you'll have no problems accomplishing this install. The only part that you really want to pay attention to and take your time on that may cause you a little bit of difficulty, maybe not as much as it did for me because I'm trying to film and do the install at the same time, is the battery tray lid skid plate install. You have to remove this and maneuver the pieces and the washer so that you can sandwich them between the actual factory 
battery cover and the skid plate cover so it all comes together nice and neat and in one piece. But that is the only difficulty I had because again I'm trying to film and do the install at the same time and show you exactly what steps I'm doing and the angles aren't as easy because my hand will get in the way as I'm doing now when I'm using the drill to remove and reinstall different fasteners on the Super Rock Ray. Again, it's very simple. Anybody can do it. Worthwhile investment. I'll post a link up to where you can buy this. And at the time, the price was about $31, $32. But I looked earlier today and they showed out of stock. But I did call, excuse me, email T-Bone Racing at one point when I was trying to get parts uh, for my Super Rock Ray. And they told me as long as you set up the notify me with your email address that will give them notice that people are interested in a part that's out of stock it will move that part up faster in the production queue and probably within a few days no later more than a week you'll see that that product is back in stock by reference of an email that you receive saying that it's on hand and ready to be purchased you'll notice also that there is this is a five piece kit of which i installed one two three, four. The fifth piece is the front skid plate and that would fit up here. Let me uh, pan up a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. The skid plate would fit right here like so. But I'm not installing the skid plate because I've already installed and I did not film the front skid plate for the Super Rock Race. So the front skid plate and bumper are this piece and comes all the way down to here and it takes the place of this skid plate. Now I could probably install it uh, but it wouldn't look right and there's no need to have that right there because it could be a piece that could get caught, could get caught and take away from some of the ground clearance. But again this is a very very simple install. I have one more set of items to install on the Super Rock Ray and that is the rear bumper and skid plate and I'll do another posting of that once I take a look at the pieces and see how they fit on the Super Rock Ray and I'll be sure to post that for you to see. Again, simple install. I think you should do it. Piece of cake. So again, another easy simple install is going to give you some added protection and add to the overall look and scheme of your Super Rock Ray. To beat a dead horse, again, as I suggested earlier, make sure you do a one-for-one -one removal and install of these parts. I mean, don't go and just remove all the, the screws and then try to put it all together. You Sure, you could probably do that, but why? You may get lost in the process and start pulling your hair out. So do one piece at a time. Put the piece up against where it's supposed to go. Ensure you are removing the correct screws. Double, chip, triple check your removal and that you have the right screws that go back in place of the ones you removed. Again, pay attention to, if you want to go back and reference the overlays I did as I was, was removing these pieces, so you can see what the part looks like and reference which type of screw goes where. This is, again, a simple install that anyone can do. I've said that before in my other postings. All you need is the right tools and patience and you can do it. Piece of cake. As always fam, take your time and thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. I truly hope that you found this video informative and will aid you in your choice of purchasing and installing these pieces on your Super Rock Ray yourself. Also remember T-Bone Racing makes these same Delrin type pieces for many other RC models. So if you don't have a Super Rock Ray and you're interested in adding some protection to your RC, check out T-Bone Racing. They may have exactly what you need and everything you need comes in the kit. And one more time, it's super, super simple to do. Check out the description box below for more details on my channel and the, my filming setup. And as always, if you like what you saw, click one of those thumb buttons. Consider subscribing and consider sharing this channel with your friends. Thanks again, fam. This is Jay of Jay Sinister Productions, exiting stage left. Stop.
Production.